You could have sworn you weren't here when you walked by that old storefront this morning. No one talked about it, only cast you very glances and changed the subject when you asked about us. But now, well after midnight, a faint fluttering glimmer hangs in our window and the smell of something nostalgic floats through the air. I believe it is safe to assume that you, intrepid listener, were afraid of monsters as a child. Something lurking in the shadows of your room, peering at you with unknown intention, and all that stood between you and certain doom were the tin covers of your bed. Safety was never guaranteed when it came to the entities that lurked in your imagination, and what really scared you was the thought that one night you might actually see them. Tonight's play is a story about such childhood fears and what happens when they are taken too far. Young terrors are often triggered by outside influences, but sometimes the worst monsters are created from the best of intentions. When I was a small child, I was terrified of the dark. I still am. Back when I was around six years old, I couldn't go a full night without crying out for one of my parents to search beneath the bed or in my closet for whatever monster I thought was waiting to eat me. Even with a nightlight, I would still see dark shapes moving around the corners of the room or strange faces looking in on me from the bedroom window. What is it, honey? There's a monster in my room. Sweetheart, remember what we talked about? The monsters can't get you. They're afraid of the nightlight we got you. But I see them. Can't I sleep with you and Dad tonight? Honey. Please, Mom. Okay, just for tonight. Don't fuss. Here's your coffee. Was your drive all right? Oh, yeah. Thanks. Ate's a ball of energy. Probably slept like a rock after he woke us all up. I'm just glad you got this little one back to sleep. How long did it take? Long enough. I'm exhausted. I couldn't sleep a wink after that. Babe, we can't keep letting Nate sleep with us. He needs to face his fears. Didn't you talk about... The nightlight? I did, but he's still scared. Great. In between him and the baby, we're barely able to function throughout the day. We need sleep. I need sleep. I know, but he's still young. Most kids his age go through a phase like this. I know I did. (laughs) That phase is keeping us all up. Don't tell me it hasn't affected you, too. (sighs) Okay, caught me. He needs something else. Yeah, another distraction. Got any ideas? Well, the nightlight is no good. He won't use his stuffed animals anymore after those kids at school made fun of him when he brought Charlie Bear. Yeah, stupid kids. He needs something that'll make him feel supported and strong. Right. Something we can substitute. Hang on. What? I think I'm onto something. Fight fire with fire. Give me a moment. Hi, sweetie. How was school? It was okay. We learned math, and I hate math. But it was Timmy's birthday, so we had cake. That was good. That's great. Hey, what if I told you I have something better than cake for you? What? What is it? Hold on. I think he's back here somewhere. Here we go. Ta-da! What's that? Meet your new bedtime friend. He's come here to keep you company. He's kind of creepy. That's the idea, buddy. He is just creepy enough to scare away the monsters and protect you at night. See, he's kind of a monster too, but he's your monster. 
Really? He'll keep me safe? You bet. What are you going to name him? He needs a good monster name. Uh, Mr. Ickbar Bigglestein. Um, okay, if that's what you like. Yep, Mr. Ickbar Bigglestein. He was pretty damn creepy, I had to admit. Honestly, looking back on it all now, I'm still impressed that my mom could think of something so strange and disturbing looking. Ickbar had the stitched together look of a Frankenstein gremlin with big white button eyes and floppy cat ears. His little arms and legs were made from a pair of my sister's black and white striped socks, and the half of his face that was green was made from one of my brother's tall football socks. His head could have been described as bulbous, and for his mouth my mom attached a piece of white fabric and sewed in a zigzag pattern in the shape of a white grin of sharp teeth. I loved him at once. Ick wasn't cute or cuddly like the stuffed animals I had, but was bold and brave, and never gave in. I started playing with him right away, getting him involved in all my games. Hey Ick, do you want the blue chuck or the green one? Well, I like green. What are we going to play with them? Demolition Derby! Yeah. <laughs> alright, alright. Better watch out. Here I come. Alright, I'm incoming! Incoming! Yeah! Uh. <laughs> hey, there's show and tell tomorrow. Can I bring you? I'd rather you not. I don't like the sun. It hurts my skin and I hate school. Yeah, me too, but sometimes it's okay. Kids sometimes make fun of me and other times they ask to play with me. Don't worry, Nate. Remember, I'll always be here when you come home. Hey you, it's time for bed. Who are you talking to? Ikbar, we're playing. Ha, I'm glad you're getting along. Well, why don't I tuck you and Ikbar in? Skedaddle into bed. Are your teeth all brushed? Yep. All right then. Good night, baby. Mom? Yeah? What if the monsters come out? You'll be fine, sweetie. You've got Ikbar to keep you safe. Okay. Ick? I hear them. Don't worry, Nate. Hold me close tonight so they know I mean business. Nothing's going to get to you while Mr. Ickbar Bigglestein is on the job. Thanks, Ick. Of course. How much do you love me? More than anything. Every night at bedtime, Ick would tell me where the monsters were hiding, and I would place him near the section of my room closest to the spookiness. If there was something in the closet, Ick would block the door. If there was a dark creature scratching at my window, Ick would be pressed up against the glass. If there was a big hairy beast under my bed, then under the bed he went. Sometimes the monsters weren't even in my room. Sometimes they would hide in my dreams, and Ickbar would have to come with me into my nightmares. It was fun bringing Ick into my dream world and he and I would spend hours fighting off ghouls and demons. Watch out, Renee! There we go! Take that! And that! Ha ha! That's it! Run away, you big softies! We did it, Ick! We beat the monsters! I told you I would always protect you. You did very well. Hey, Ick, my tooth is loose. Maybe we'll be able to meet the Tooth Fairy tomorrow night. Actually, can I have your tooth? Why? You will help me fight off the bad things. Real monsters have real teeth, and my mouth is empty. Well, okay. As soon as it falls out, I'll give it to you. How much do you love me? More than anything. Hey, good morning. Morning. So, where did your tooth go? I heard the tooth fairy didn't find it under your pillow last night. It's fine. I gave it to Ick. Oh. Well, all right. Maybe Ikbar will leave something for you instead. He doesn't have to. It's what he likes. I love him. Aha! Suit yourself. If you and Ikbar have an arrangement, don't let me get in the way. From then on, every time I lost a tooth, I would give it to Ick. He'd always thank me, of course, and tell me that he loved me. Eventually, though, I ran out of baby teeth, and it was around that time I ran out of interest in my old friend. The night terrors were long gone. I was fine. Hey, honey, 
how was school? Fine, I'm gonna listen to some music before dinner. All right, but make sure to finish your homework. And clean your room. I saw one of your old toys on the floor this afternoon. Huh? Which one? Uh, Ikbar. It wasn't me. It was probably that little brat. Hey, don't call your sister that. Sorry, I put it back on the shelf. I don't play with toys anymore. I'm too old for that. Back where you belong. I belong with you. Jeez, I almost thought... <laughs> Never mind. I really should have paid attention. I know that now. Because over time, the nightmares came back. It was slow at first, but they became worse than ever. So bad that they even began to follow me to the waking world, terrorizing every dark corner or rustle in the bushes. Are you okay? The dogs! They're right outside! What? They they chased me here. I think they're rabid. Honey, there's nothing out there. Yes, there is! Look out the window. The yard's empty. Where? <sighs> Nate, I didn't want to press you, but you've been really jumpy lately. It's worrying me. Are you still having nightmares? I'm... I'll, I'll, I'll be up in my room. Nate, you come back here! Leave me alone! I'm fine! What the hell? What's wrong, old friend? <sighs> Ichbar? Did you forget about me so easily? That's not fair, Nate. You, you can't be doing this. You're not real. And neither were the dogs that chased you, were they? Hmm? Wait, did you do that? No, of course not. I'm your friend. I keep the monsters away, remember? But you stopped feeding me. Why should I protect you? Protect me from what? Let me show you. Close your eyes. I blinked once, and everything changed. I wasn't in my bedroom anymore, I was, I was somewhere else. It wasn't hell, but the comparison wasn't far off. It was some sort of forest, a horrible nightmarish place where Partial embryonic abortions hung from the canopy, ground swarmed with carnivorous insects. A thick fog wafted through the air and with it the stench of rotting meat, with chartreuse lightning flashing across the night sky. In the distance, I could hear the agonizing screams of something not quite human. Oh god, what is this place? This is what your world will become without me. It will swarm in on you and smother your senses away. And this is all you will know. Ick, please, don't do this to me. Take, take me away! You must understand, I'm the only one who can stop it. Bring me what I need, and I will. But I don't have any more teeth to give. It doesn't matter. I need teeth, and what you gave me before is not enough. Prove that you love me, Nate, and I will do the same in turn. I will guard you, like always. Anything, Ikbar, I promise. More than anything. The following day, I raided my parents' closet for my brother's baby teeth, giving them all to Iqbar. Almost immediately, the night terrors ceased, and I was more or less able to go on about my life as normal. From time to time, I would have to sneak into my little sister's room and snatch what was meant for the tooth fairy, 
or strangle one of the neighborhood cats and pry out its sharp little incisors. Anything to ward off the visions, anything from a shark tooth necklace to a cavity ridden bicuspid. I also began to notice that Ick would move about my room whenever I left for a length of time, rearranging my stuff and hanging additional curtains. He was even beginning to look more lifelike somehow, and the right light as teeth would glisten, and he was warm to the touch. As much as he creeped me out, I couldn't work up the courage to destroy him, knowing perfectly well where that would leave me. So I went on collecting teeth for Ick throughout all of high school and college. The older I got, the more things I would learn to fear, and the more teeth Ick would need to keep me safe. I'm 22 years old now, with a decent job, my own apartment, and a set of dentures. It's been almost a month since Ick's last meal, and the horrors are starting to crowd around me once more. I think he's grown an appetite for human teeth, seeing as mine were a last resort. Do you know that there are 32 teeth in the adult mouth? That's a lot of teeth. At least a month or two is worth depending. <laughs> Look, now I'm telling you all this so you'll understand why you're here. Because I owe you that much. If you'd seen what I saw, you knew that every fear was just waiting on the edge of your vision to fill every waking moment, you'd do the same thing. It's really nothing personal. Your teeth are a bit stained and yellow, but it shouldn't make a difference. And here, I promised I'll make it quick and painless. I mean, I'm not gonna just yank them out while you're still alive. I'm not a complete monster. I'm sorry. I brought you something to eat. Ick, I uh, hope you like it. Ah, this looks marvelous. Ooh, you found a good batch this time. Thank you. How much do you love me? More than anything. More than anything in the world. A morbid end, to be sure. But it is not a surprising one. As we grow older, so do our fears, until we become the very monsters we imagined. Chew on that one for a bit, dear guests, and let it sink in. Until next we convene, pleasant dream. <laughs> Midnight Marinera is a bi-monthly podcast written, produced, directed, and mixed by David King. This episode features the voice talents of Ben Spiegel, Oliver Stafford, Sasha Kuczynski, Edward Stafford, and David King. Ikbar Biggelstein is based on the original short story by Stephen D. Harris. Comments? Suggestions? Property rights to build on ancient sacred burial ground? Please feel free to leave feedback wherever you listen to this. Email us at midnightmarinera at gmail.com, or follow us on Twitter or Tumblr. And hey... If you want to contribute to the show and make the little angel and devil on your shoulders shut up, consider becoming a patron and supporting Midnight Marinera's Patreon page with a small monthly donation. Thanks for listening.